This video will cover the basics of contracts and trading. When you dock at a city or a station, contracts will be available in the inventory console. Just click on Available Contracts here. A contract's description is displayed with these lines here. The price offered for the contract is displayed here in green, and you can use the buttons at the bottom here to scroll through the available contracts or accept one. The pay offered can vary greatly depending on the objective required. You may occasionally see a distress call like this contract here. These can pay more relative to other contracts, but can be a little bit more challenging and sometimes require planning in advance to have the resources on hand to deliver to the required destination. They also have a time limit to accept. The red line of text here indicates how much time is remaining before the contract and the distress call expires. In a disputed system like the one we're in, there can be a mix of combat and non-combat objectives. But to get started, we'll accept this contract, which just requires us to fly out, locate, and recover an item. So next, we just need to click on the Accept button here. A green waypoint indicator will appear on the heads-up display, as well as on the radar, to guide us to the required destination. The yellow nav marker will also automatically be placed at the waypoint for us. And we can just leave everything set up that way, and then jump to the waypoint once we leave this station hangar. The current contract's objective is available in the inventory console, and you can also cancel it there if you change your mind and decide you don't want to complete it. And once we're clear of the hangar, we can go ahead and activate the jump drive and head to the waypoint. And once we arrive, we can begin our search. Usually with this contract type, the object that we need to find will be within sensor range, near the waypoint, and it will be indicated with a purple radar blip that looks like this. So we just need to turn to face in that direction and then fly towards the signal, and then once we recover it and return it to the station, the contract objective will be completed and will be paid automatically. You can optionally target the item using the object targeting controls, but it's not required to complete this objective. I generally prefer to target such items to better keep track of range, as it makes managing distance and alignment easier when a contract requires recovering an item with the tractor beam. Once in range, we can bring the tractor beam up to full power by holding the default B key or pressing the Alt-B key combination, and then the item will be tractored into the cargo bay. Then all we need to do is just return the item to the local station. And to do that, we'll jump back to the station. First, I'll turn away from this hostile ship that's near us, and then I will open the navigation console, and we can right-click on the station's icon here in the middle of the map, and once that's done, you can also click on the Station button under the Local Points of Interest menu. I'll go ahead and do that just to demonstrate how that affects our arrival point. And so we'll be a little bit further away from the station than we normally would be if we just plotted a jump point directly to it. Um, this will give us a little bit of time to slow down and then pick a station hangar entrance. And then we can fly in and drop off the item. And the item will automatically be removed from our cargo bay when we dock with the station and then at that point we'll also be paid automatically. There are quite a few hostels nearby, so I'm going to keep our speed high and we're going to dock quickly. We'll fly in and the docking tractor beam will automatically engage and then the item is removed from our cargo bay and we're automatically paid. And you can also see that we received a medal, a term of service medal here. The types of contracts that will be offered to you can vary greatly depending on your ship's configuration, your reputation, and territory conditions based on which faction controls the region of territory that you're in, as well as the economy and technology level. Other factors can apply, such as environmental conditions, which can also make some objectives more challenging to complete. These parameters can affect both pay and the objective types that are offered to you. You can review some of the primary conditions in the navigation console using the quadrant map mode and the territory mode or the econ tech mode with the buttons available here. In the territory mode, the red squares indicate enemy territory, yellow squares indicate disputed territory, and green squares indicate friendly territory. In the econ tech mode, the red squares indicate a low level, yellow medium, and green high level. Next, we'll cover some of the basics of the trade system. In the Inventory Console, the Items for Sale menu provides a list of commodities, equipment, and weapons that are available to purchase. You can hold the mouse pointer over an item in the list to view more details about it, as well as loading and installation options. Each item category is color-coded. Commodities are purple, 
and you can load all available units of a commodity type with the left mouse button, or one unit at a time with the right mouse button. Equipment items are yellow, and you can install them on your ship with the left mouse button, or route them to the cargo bay with the right mouse button. And finally, weapons and other items that can be installed on secondary hardpoints are green, and you can install them on your ship with the left mouse button, or route them to the cargo bay with the right mouse button. So to buy these 18 units of food at the top of the list, I need to have at least 450 credits, and I need to have room in the cargo bay to store them. I can then simply left click on the item, and it is transferred to the cargo bay, and the credits are deducted from my account. And if I already have a commodity of the same type in a cargo bay, I can right click to load one unit at a time to fill in that cargo bay. The process is just as simple for equipment items. I need to have an available equipment slot to install the item with the left click option, or an available cargo bay to load the item with the right click option. Likewise with weapons, for the left click installation option, I need a compatible weapon hardpoint. There are three weapon hardpoint types, particle cannons, beam cannons, and secondaries. Secondary hardpoints can install things like missiles, torpedoes, rockets, as well as things like shield packs, fuel packs, and other miscellaneous compatible items. I'll go ahead and buy eight cyclone missiles using the left click option to install them on secondary weapon hardpoints. As mentioned earlier, you can buy and load equipment and weapon items to the cargo bay using the right click option. Once those items are in the cargo bay, you can later sell those items from the cargo bay list by left clicking on them or right click on them to transfer them from the cargo bay to install them on your ship if a compatible hardpoint is available. And as you may free up a cargo bay, you can again right click on an equipment or weapon item to load it. I'll demonstrate that now by right clicking on this cargo scanner. The types of items available for sale will vary depending on regional conditions, including the economy and technology level, as well as the industry type of any local planet that might be in the same sector. So it can pay to explore for the best opportunities to buy low and sell high. Lastly, we'll go over station hangers and how they can be used to store up to 25 cargo bays worth of items. To access the hangar, first click on the Enter Station button here. Then from here you can store items from your cargo bay or your equipment list using the store buttons in the middle. And then to transfer them back to your ship, you can use the load button that will appear to the right of any items that are in the hangar's storage. A hangar transaction fee will apply anytime you store or retrieve an item. So you'll want to minimize overall hangar operations like this by consolidating loading and retrieving activities into fewer stops to reduce overall fees. That's all for this tutorial. View the instructions that come with the game or online for more details.